Hey guys, you are listening to the English Made Simple show. This is episode number 188, number 188, numero 188. Hello, hello! What's up, everybody? My name is Milena from EnglishMadeSimple.net, EnglishMadeSimple.net. How are ya? How's everybody doing? Good! You should know by now how to say, um, how are you in Australian? It's just, how are ya? <laughs> All right, so this episode is coming to you a little bit late. Uh, so, uh, I'm still on a mini break here in Melbourne. And uh, we're going to go back to our normal schedule from next week. So if you're listening in June of 2018, um, yep, just letting you guys know that we're going to go back to our normal schedule of um, podcasts once a week, every Monday. Right. So today I've got something special for you guys. Um, I've got an amazing guest on the show. Her name is Soraya and she's from Chile. And uh, Soraya lives in Australia. She has been living here for five years. Uh, we talk about uh, her experience of living in Australia. Uh, she has been studying here. Well, she did study. She finished her studies. Uh, and then uh, she's now working in Australia. And she loves Australia so much that she actually created a business that helps other people who are interested in studying overseas, um, coming to Australia to study, she's helping them find universities and uh, find accommodation and basically just supports them throughout um, the whole process of coming to Australia to study. So I think uh, it's best if Soraya tells you what she does. <laughs> okay, <laughs> great. Uh, just to let you guys know, halfway through the interview, there's a bit of a noise um, just for a short period of time, not too long. Uh, background noise happening. That was a rubbish truck noise in the background. Okay. <laughs> so uh, I kind of let it uh, in there and we talked about what this truck does. Uh, this rubbish is not a typical rubbish from the kitchen. From It's not a f uh, food. It's not food wastage uh, that's being picked up. Um, so the rubbish truck is picking up the unused items around the house and uh, this happens I think once or twice a year and the council organizes a pickup of your stuff that you don't use around the house like your tables, chairs, sofas, um, dishes, anything that's hard and uh, doesn't uh, dissolve in the ground so it's called a hard rubbish day or inorganic rubbish day I remember in New Zealand they used to call it inorganic rubbish so then we knew we had to throw away old chairs and things like that. So that's a little uh, side note for you <laughs> to watch out for some background noise. It doesn't last too long. It's just for uh, like 10 seconds maybe. Radio. So let's uh, get cracking. Let's get cracking with our interview with Soraya. Here we go. My name is Soraya Rojas. I come from Chile, arrived in Australia around 2011. I came here to learn English and then um, I studied a diploma in tourism. And then um, after I learned English for about four months, mm -hmm. like my, my English back then um, wasn't good enough so I thought yeah I have to uh, learn some English and I prefer to come to Australia instead of other countries like uh, USA because um, I thought it was more sort of wildlife and more like different to what uh, usually people saw. A lot of my friends um, went also to other countries like Canada or England or those countries and I thought oh, Australia and all the koalas and the kangaroos Mm -hmm. You know, a snake, <laughs> uh, spiders, etc. <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask you about the spiders and snakes. Uh, have you seen? Have you seen any? Yes, yes, yes. What? Actually, uh, yes, I have. Have you? Uh, I have seen a snake, uh, but not in the wild. I've seen it like in uh, in parks, like that are oh, conservation so. parks. 
But I've yeah. seen spiders. Actually, last week I saw a spider. <laughs> last week, uh, well, um, usually, usually most of the cars here um, have um, uh, little spiders. But um, yeah, myself, a couple of years ago, I went to Wilson Promontory, one of the uh, national parks. Mm -hmm. And we were just doing a walk with my friends around. And then one of my friends said, oh, sorry, just be careful. There is a snake right next to you. Whoa. And I freaked out. It was horrible. Yeah, I started crying. Uh -huh. I said, oh, no, you don't need to cry. It was like um, King Brown or something like that. It's one of the most dangerous ones. Brown snakes. Yes. One of those yeah. brown snakes. Wow. Yeah. Yes. Oh, wow. I didn't know. <laughs> so that was at the Wilson's uh, prom. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, note to myself, don't go to Wilson's prom. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so I just want to go back to your, um, like before coming to Australia, how, yeah. did you speak English in Chile? Did you already learn English uh, while you were there before coming to Australia? I, I took a couple English courses back at home uh, in Concepcion and also in Santiago. And to be honest with you, I thought it was just a waste of money and um, a waste of time. Although it sort of built up my uh, vocabulary somehow, it didn't help me or to have confident enough to talk with someone. I, I would feel very shy. I would never say any word. So that was um, when I came here, my, when I started doing this English course. I thought, I, sorry, I, I felt like my vocabulary was good at the time, but I didn't feel confident enough to talk. And then mm -hmm. um, after having full-time classes, like 20 hours per week here, um, yeah, I definitely I feel much more comfortable than I was talking. I learned English here when I came to Australia. Ah, okay, because you were put on the spot, you know, uh, you had to speak, uh, I guess, at the airport. When you arrived at the airport, you had to speak in English. You were forced to do things. Yes, and you know what? I um, one of my first, uh, like, um, how you say, like when the first time when I talked with, with Australians here, I went to um, trying to get a mobile phone, and back at home in Chile, in Spanish, we said celular mm -hmm. or, uh, or telefono, for the telefono for the mobile, and I went to the shop and I said, oh, can I get a chip? for the SIM card and can, is, this is for my cellular and the girl was just looking at me like, what are you? <laughs> <laughs> that was a horrible experience. Cellular. <laughs> cellular. Oh, <yeah. laughs> That's funny. So did you study English in Australia when you arrived? Yes, mm -hmm. I took a four month English course, mm -hmm. course and at Box Hill TAFE. Um, and for me, was um, at the time wasn't the general English course. I did the academic English course because I was preparing for undertaking um, diploma afterwards. Yeah. yeah. And uh, were you able to get a job after that, after completing this diploma? No, but um, at the time I tried to do some um, interview by uh, phone. Like I had people calling me for interviews by a phone and it was just horrible. They would just hang mm -hmm. up. Um, and yeah, so I basically did pretty much these little jobs like um, selling socks in a market, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> doing funding in the street. You know, the, when the, the people trying to write um, funds with a jar and they come to the car the wind and you have to put some coins in there so I was doing that at the time as oh, well wow, I didn't know. much yeah it was very hard so I was trying to do all these little jobs and it didn't work that well I was very tired and I was feeling very disappointed my English wasn't good no one was calling me for a job position so it was hard mm -hmm. did you have anybody to help you with the like looking for work um, with your CV no. and things like that you no, had to no. figure it out on your own yes <laughs> But then um, after I finished the diploma, I went back to Chile uh, and I stayed there for about a month. And then in Chile, I felt so sad and I felt like, oh, I need to go back to Australia. Like the experience um, was amazing at the time. I feel uh, like I wanted to live here in Australia. So I went back for the visa reasons, so my visa expires, I went back to Chile and I'm trying to plan again how uh, I'm going to be able to come back to Australia. 
So mm -hmm. I started to research about how going to the university, how will um, my previous uh, diploma studies will help me to uh, to take this um, undergraduate course in the university. So mm -hmm. I did all the application by myself, and finally I I got enrolled in the university. And then at the time, I met my partner, my actual partner. He's Australian as well, mm -hmm. and he went to Chile to live with me we stayed there for about three months mm -hmm. and then um, so he came back to Australia and then I came back to Australia um, mm -hmm. with a living together and then I started attending to the university and then I realized that oh I have to you know build up more my English and actually being with my partner and just in an environment that was all English for me was uh, I think uh, the best experience yeah, just and, to be uh, surrounded by English-speaking um, people. Because I think was one, that was one of the issues um, at the beginning when I came to Australia. I was living with only Latin American people, so I was just living with my friends, Chilean friends, so we didn't practice any English, of course, at home. <laughs> so I think that was one of the mistakes <laughs> that I yes. did, and if I would do it again, I would probably come back and... Um, and live with people that only speak English and they don't understand even Spanish. Then you feel forced yeah. to, yeah, to talk the language. And I think it's possible in Australia to do that. Like if, uh, let's say, your friends uh, want to come to Australia and uh, they need to practice um, English, it's like Australia, what I'm trying to say is Australian culture allows you to kind of, it's normal to live, to flat share with people you don't know yeah. like uh, they call it flat sharing and then you can rent a room somewhere and live with an Australian person and uh, you know just you don't have to go straight to the Latin community or go to another community I guess you just uh, you can just live with the Australian people as a flatmate exactly. uh, that's very common it's common here in Australia yeah, yeah. and uh, most people don't know that you know before like I guess when you were in Chile you didn't know that was possible. You were probably checking all these Latin communities in um, yeah. Australia who you could connect. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then, well, uh, when I was at the university, um, I was in year two, I think, and a friend of mine, uh, he said to me, oh, Soraya, there is an open position for a travel agent, um, mm -hmm. wholesale travel agency. Do you want to apply? And I said, oh, Maybe now, that after I've been a couple of years here, maybe my English is good yes. enough. So, and I have to do, all, you know, my resume and running from here. And I, again, I didn't, no one helped me to do all these. Like, I think definitely that would be a difference if someone need to ask for help and do it as the Australian way, you know, like doing the resume correctly or trying mm -hmm. to practice, uh, going an interview and everything. So I went to the interview with um, uh, with Remco, who was the person, uh, the mm -hmm. manager, and and I got the position. I got yeah. a part time position because I, back at home in Chile, I was doing the same. I was a travel agent for a couple of years, and I got my part time job. First part time job after a couple of years in Australia. So yeah, it was <laughs> a very good, happy moment for me at the time. Yes. So would you say that it took you like I don't know two years to call Australia home? Like your new home? Yes. Yeah, definitely. Yes. After after getting the job and feeling settled and yeah. meeting and still, people. Yeah. Yes. And and then another story is my I start doing the emails, you know, writing emails in English. It was also a different complete story. And then I also had to start like studying a little bit more and doing all the proper uh, Mm -hmm. Also doing the the calls, calling uh, clients mm -hmm. and all oh, that, phone. and trying to yeah, and the phone so hard because mm -hmm. I couldn't understand. Sometimes I was writing down all the spelling. Oh yes. my goodness, I was spelling to me the emails. Oof, I was suffering so much. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's normal. Uh, yes. When, in another language yeah. yeah it's very normal my husband's going through that same thing <laughs> he's, uh, <laughs> he's also having trouble you know like he's having troubles writing emails um, you know running presentations doing presentations in English 
So imagine wow. doing that, you know, in front of people that you, you know, you don't know and speaking in another language that's not your own. So yeah, that's a, that's a new struggle. But you know, if you're not in that situation, you wouldn't have overcome it. But now you are, you are um, extra experienced, I guess. You're more experienced and uh, more confident. Yes, definitely. Now I'm more, much more confident. And, and then after that first job, that's it. Like you start to build down all your networking and um, mm -hmm. uh, having connections, going to social meetings, uh, and just get involved with the Australian culture, with the, with the Australians, yeah, culture and everything. So, um, sorry for the noise, I don't know, can you hear the noise? Yes, I can hear it, I was going to say something about the noise. <laughs> I'm so sorry guys, uh, this is the typical, uh, you mm -hmm. know, when you have to book your hair rubbish, Oh, it's the rubbish, rubbish day, car isn't it? collection. Yeah, so ah, okay. You want to talk about that a little bit? <laughs> yes. Uh, so basically, in Australia, we have uh, they call it inorganic rubbish or hard rubbish, which is uh, not which is not the rubbish uh, from your kitchen. <laughs> from it's not a food rubbish. Um, it's not food rubbish. It's your like sofa or unused furniture or something that's. The, uh, <laughs> that uh, you sit on maybe <laughs> use <laughs> so uh, this happens once every six months I think they take the rubbish so you can throw away unused things unused furniture and it gets collected by the council so today uh, that's what happening <laughs> that's what happening uh, at Soraya's place it's uh, it's the hard rubbish day today which is okay we are we are completely immersed in this Australian. <laughs> I'm so sorry for the noise day. I have left now. Yeah, no, that's fine. It should be okay now. So, um, just wanted to ask you before we start talking about tour studies, like, would you yeah. recommend your friends to come to Australia? Like now, how long have you been living there? Sorry, more than two years, but how long now? Five years, maybe. Five years, yes. Yeah. From the second time that I come here, that I arrived uh, now mm -hmm. five years, continuously five years. And before that was a year and a half with the bracket of eight months when I was in Chile. Um, but yeah, more than Do you recommend years. your friends to come to Australia now? Oh. Like, how, how, what would you advise them to do if they wanted to come to Australia? Yeah, definitely. Like in Chile now, lot of people it's very common now at the moment all my friends are asking me oh sorry how do you do it uh, who should I speak with um, please recommend me some people uh, and they're trying to research usually well for Chile also you know that we have the working holiday visa if you are between 18 years old and uh, 30 years old mm -hmm. you can come in a um, working holiday visa for a year and work and do some studies as well. But um, I would definitely recommend to everyone who want to make a change in their life, like myself, back at the time I was doing an um, office job and then I feel like I need to uh, do something, I need to do a change in my life and why in Australia? So that's what I did. I started to do um, research and all that. I, I wish I would have more help back then to do everything probably I would have as I said, I would um, correct some of the mistakes that I did at the time, like not living with uh, uh -huh. my friends uh, and doing different things. Also, getting ready for a job interview, doing your resume. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, things that they definitely you need. Um, to be prepared. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, for this Australia culture, yes. Mm -hmm. So what uh, you <laughs> mentioned something that... Um, your friends, some friends, uh, they live in Canada, uh, some went to the US, Canada. Yes. But you've decided to come to Australia. Well, yes. Why in Australia? So, my friends, so some of my friends that uh, have traveled to Canada, they said to me, oh, if you hate the cold weather, don't go there. It's horrible. <laughs> Too far away, it's very cold and uh, there are winter seasons that people definitely don't go outside. A lot mm. of depression as well for people, for the weather. Mm. Um, in terms of economy, I think it's similar to Australia. Yeah. Um, apart from that, uh, yeah. Then USA, my personal opinion, I wouldn't go there, no way. <laughs> <laughs> With Trump, no, sorry, no. I can't do that. Um, uh, yeah. What else? 
in England also is very cold in mm -hmm. winter as well. Um, so yeah, Australia or New Zealand. Like mm -hmm. I've been in New Zealand as well, visiting my friends and it's a beautiful country. Um, a little bit, uh, I mean, it's smaller than Australia, but um, very good in similar culture as well mm -hmm. and currency as well. I mean, Australia, it has everything, you know, the, the wildlife, uh, good environment for people who want to work, um, mm -hmm. work salaries, work conditions, security, wonderful education, mm. it's all in one. <laughs> so now you love it so much in Australia that you've started a um, business uh, there, yeah. uh, helping people to come to Australia. So. Can you tell us a little bit about your uh, business? Uh, it's called Tour Studies. Um, yes, what do you specialize in? What is this about? So, um, because the same, you know, like my personal, uh, um, my personal experience was at the time that I didn't have all this help and I had all my friends back in Chile asking me how to do certain things. I said, oh, definitely I can help you with this and with that. And then I, so Tour Study was born um, a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. We are at an, an agency, an education agency, who help all the students, um, or people who want to come for a student's reason. So they want to come to learn English. We do all the visa application. We do the um, application for the uh, English school. We also put, it's like a package. We do up, uh, the insurance as well. So when you come in, in a student visa, you need um, insurance. So we do that as well. If you need accommodation, we also help you to find a place to stay for that time. Mm -hmm. So yeah, exactly. We do absolutely everything for people who wants to come to Australia for study purposes. Okay. Uh, and how do people um, get in touch with you? How can they get in touch with you? Let's say someone is listening now and they want to come to Australia to study or to learn English. How could people get in touch with you? We have, I have two uh, business partners who are based in Santiago. Okay. Um, my friend Carla Leon and also Jordana Lastra. I can uh, leave the details inside the show notes uh, for people who, yeah. who are interested. They can just visit my website and find details uh, of your website yeah. and also details on how to contact uh, your, uh, yes. yeah, your colleagues in Chile as well. So. And also for people, so if um, you are at the moment, if you're in um, Chilean or someone who speaks Spanish um, and you want to renew your visa, uh, we also do that. If you are onshore here in Australia, we can help you with that. We have also very good discount with the English schools. And um, yeah, you can just uh, ring me. Uh, Milena will give you all my details and also mm -hmm. my email. So um, the website is tour, T-O-U-R studies s-t-u-d-i-e-s dot com dot com okay and do you help people in new zealand as well or is it just for australia now at the moment only australia okay that's good yes. uh well thank you so much soraya uh thank you so much for yes. coming down and having a chat about your experience uh, in australia and about tour studies as well Oh, thank you, Milena, for having me. And I hope I can help all the people and feel like more confident in trying to inquire and come to this awesome country. <laughs> you won't regret. <laughs> Actually, I might, bring you, I might bring you back on the show because I'm really curious to hear more about uh, your experience in Australia and yeah. about your experience when you were with your first job in Australia. So yes, I'm yes. also going to uh, see if I can bring you back again to have a chat. Yeah, definitely. I will be more than happy to have another chat and hopefully without all that noise, I'm so sorry for that, guys. We'll choose another day that's not a rubbish day. <laughs> yeah. Yes, that's, that's true. <laughs> Thank you, Milena. Thanks, Soraya. So there we have it, boys and girls. I hope you enjoyed that chat with Soraya. I hope you learned something new in that uh, interview there. And I hope you realize that there are different ways of coming to Australia. If you have ever wondered, oh, it would be so nice to move to Australia. It would be so nice to go somewhere else. It doesn't matter if you want to come to Australia, but it could be Canada. It could be the UK or US. Oh, it just would be nice to see other cultures and experience something else, you know. 
because that experience is invaluable. It's priceless. Awesome. So I'm going to put all the links uh, that Soraya mentioned in the transcription of today's episode. And you can just go to englishmadesimple.net slash 188. Just put three numbers in there. englishmadesimple.net slash 188. And that will just bring up this episode with the notes. When they're ready, I'm going to upload them. Cool. So I hope you enjoy that and um, hope you have an amazing rest of the week. And we're going to go back to normal next week. Cool bananas. Alrighty, guys. You've been jamming with Milena and Soraya. Until next time, hasta la próxima. Notes. When they're ready, I'm going to upload them. Cool. So I hope you enjoy that and um, hope you have an amazing rest of the week and we're going to go back to normal next week. Cool bananas. Alrighty, guys. You've been jamming with Milena and Soraya. Until next time, hasta la próxima. Mm-hmm.